You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. On Tuesday, it went um, pretty deep on the, the Greg Brooks story, but uh, stopping short of telling the entire story, left that for uh, the Brooks family, which they uh, elected to do on Tuesday night. Uh, you probably saw there was a, a post that the Brooks family put out on Tuesday night. I'll, I'll read it very, very briefly for you here. Greg Jr. was diagnosed last week with a large brain tumor that required emergency surgery. Doctors successfully performed the procedure Friday to remove the mask. We are awaiting biopsy results. We are grateful for the work and care of the medical staff helping Greg through these challenges and for the concern and love poured out by so many in the Louisiana, Arkansas, national sports communities. This means the world to us at this difficult time. Greg continues to fight. We wait for the clarity on the extent of that battle. His incredible strength of character gives us confidence, but we also know that he needs our support now more than ever. Please keep Greg and our family in your prayers. So that is a, uh, a message posted by the, uh, the Brooks family on Tuesday evening. Um, so y if you were here on the show uh, Tuesday, we, we kind of um, alluded to this a bit. And um, out of the very obvious and sensitive nature of the, the subject matter, was going to wait and let the Brooks family uh, disclose it how and when they wanted. But what was very clear, as we discussed yesterday, is that not only is Greg Brooks's uh, season very much in jeopardy, his his football career is very much in jeopardy. And this is quite literally a matter of saving Greg Brooks's life right now. Um, what, I, what I'm willing uh, to say that now that the, the family has disclosed the the crux of it. What I'm what I'm willing to to say to add some detail around it is this. So during fall camp, Greg Brooks um, was having bouts with vertigo. That was reported. We we knew that. And um, my understanding is that they knew at the time that it wasn't concussion related. Brooks didn't have any big hit or anything like that. It it was he was becoming dizzy and nauseous and was vomiting and he was treated for vertigo. And the symptoms subsided, and he returned to the field, and he played against Florida State, and he played against Grambling. And as I understand it, at halftime of the Grambling game, he had another episode where uh, uh, the, the, the vertigo, the dizziness, et, et cetera. So he did not play in the second half of the game against Grambling. And then as the week was progressing, uh, leading into Mississippi State, there was another instance, and that's what on the SEC coaches' teleconference Wednesday morning um, Brian Kelly disclosed, kind of picking it up from you know, from that midweek episode that Greg Brooks had. We were trying to find out what you know the symptoms were, and he had another uh, episode. Disney, you know, he had dizziness again uh, on Thursday of of uh, actually I think it would have been Wednesday of of last week. Finally, we said that enough's enough, and, and we got a, um, a an MRI. And that's when um, the tumor was was uh, was located. So you know the vertigo was just a symptom uh, of what was obviously a larger issue. So mid late last week is when he had another episode. Sent him in for the the scan. They found the tumor. He went in for emergency surgery on Friday. That's why we learned that he was unavailable on Saturday. And then after the game, when you saw Brian Kelly in the post-game locker room awarding the game ball to Greg Brooks and his teammates chanting, you knew it was something more serious. And that's when some of this this info kind of started to leak. But, but Saturday night, I had a pretty good handle on it. Certainly by the time we got to Monday, kind of knew the, the the story. And Brian Kelly at his Monday presser said he, he wasn't going to disclose any. He was going to let the family do it as they wished. And I think that's 100% the right thing to do. Um, it's such an interesting time because this happens as LSU's preparing to play Arkansas in September, the earliest the two teams have ever played. Typically, this is a November game. Uh, but the fact that this is happening right now 
the week that LSU's playing Arkansas, and of course, Greg Brooks, who's from West Jeff, started his career and played three years at Arkansas, two of them under Sam Pittman in 2020 and 2021 before coming to LSU a year ago. Sam Pittman knows Greg Brooks very, very well. And uh, Pittman on the SEC Coaches Teleconference uh, mentioned he did get a chance to speak to Greg Brooks's family uh, since the surgery. was able to talk to Mama uh, on Monday, I guess it was, and we're just continuing to pray for him. But in a nutshell, he's, and I mean this all my heart, he's a wonderful, wonderful kid. And that didn't change when he decided to go back to his home state of Louisiana. And, and uh, we have prayed and will continue to pray every day for his health. So it's it's a situation that very clearly is going to touch both coaching staffs, both teams, a lot of Arkansas players played with Greg Brooks during his, his three years there in Fayetteville. And then, of course, all the fans that will be there in Tiger Stadium on Saturday. Now... Whenever we talk about things like this, I always kind of break it down in two. There's the the very real, important, real-life scenario involved, and then there's the far less consequential football scenario. Uh, if you were not here on Tuesday, um, I did a full segment about what LSU's safety room is going to look like without Greg Brooks, because as we said on Tuesday, you have to proceed as if you're not going to have Greg Brooks for, for the remainder of the season. And I think now that's that should be pretty clear to everybody. It's You're not going to have Brooks this year. And as I understand it, there's a very real question to whether or not he will ever be able to play football again. That's certainly an unknown right now. But Brian Kelly uh, on the SEC Coaches Teleconference um, in relaying a conversation that he had with Greg Brooks, uh, Greg has a far more optimistic outlook. That's so hard for me to, to even know, you know, what, there, there are so many unanswered questions. I, I don't even know that I could even begin to to give you the medical pieces relative to the the surgery to even give you um, an educated answer to that. I saw him in the hospital on Sunday. You know, he's still coming out of uh, you know heavy sedation, so we weren't able to have a, a lucid conversation. But I know before he went in, <laughs> he he was pretty he was pretty clear about playing again this year, but that's that's Greg Brooks. Uh, and it's awesome to have that attitude. And and I, I believe very much in the power of the mind and controlling your thoughts, controlling your mind, controlling your world, all that sort of stuff. So the fact that Greg Brooks is in that headspace is awesome. And uh, everybody here, I know, is praying for him and pulling for him. Uh, it, and that is paramount to anything else and we all and I think every human understands that on a very human level that is so much more consequential than anything related to football uh be that as be that as it may this is a sports show and so in the context of the football season LSU is going to proceed as if they're not going to have Greg Brooks the rest of the year and that's the right thing to do and this will be an interesting um foray into how that looks without Greg Brooks. You already played Mississippi State without him. This is a different type of challenge stylistically with the offense Arkansas is going to run. And so when we're back here on Monday, we'll have a much better sense of what that secondary looks like without Greg Brooks. But uh, most importantly is um, wait on the biopsy of the tumor. Uh, the hope certainly is that it is benign and uh, and that this is a, a, a speedy recovery for Greg Brooks. But as it goes along and when we find out more, we'll certainly pass it along to you as well. But of course, in the meantime, all of our thoughts and prayers continue to be with Greg Brooks and his family. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact and be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.